We got a Vista Cruiser in here. And I knew it was going to be a matter of time before I get the uh, spray-on roofs in here. And I'm not an advocate for them. So this is, uh, I don't know what brand it is, but it could be RV Armor, Flex Armor, whoever. I don't know, but you, it, it's been sprayed. So you can see even though it's been sprayed, look at all that. Not going to stick, not going to stick. Hey, okay. put all this right to the roof. That's not terrible, but all around the antenna, same problem, same problem with all of that stuff. So then um, uh, down here on this other side, we got a similar problem right here. Look at there. Whoa! Hey, watch your step. Right there. Hey, okay. they try to put more caulking on here to salvage it. Also around the. Uh, around this here, look at there, I just kept you know, kind of putting more on, more on, doesn't solve the problem, it's not going to solve the problem, so, you know, the root, the, the product itself so far on the rest of the roof seems okay, but what good is that if it's going to leak right here, you know, and everywhere else, and you got to go around and try and seal and caulk all that, they went around the, the glass here, they spray all that, but, you know, they also went around with caulking on there because it didn't seal right, so they tried to salvage that. So, but it doesn't work. If it worked, I would buy the machine. If I was real confident that it would work, I would buy the machine. See that little hole right there, right here? Look at there. A nice little leak right there. The whole thing's just coming out, see? And they keep putting caulking on there. But it, it just doesn't work. It's not a good system. So, and when I did commercial work, I had a $25,000 sprayer. So, if it worked, I'd invest in one and hey, we'd get going with it. But it doesn't so the uh, we're just going to try and figure out what we're going to do with this I'm not sure how I'm going to address this but I do want to get that up on a curb so I don't know if this actually needs this portion needs to be redacted at all it seems pretty good but um, and this is phylon right here so we really didn't want to tear all that up it rolls all the way down so I just didn't want to start getting into all that if I didn't have to um, but I may be able to go a different route and be able to, if this deck is good, then I can glue to this. And I'll just bring the roofing all the way up. Then I can weld my curb. And then I'll bring it down and around all the way over. That's the plan, Stan. So, uh, and like you said, we'll see. If, if I don't do that, it would have to be terminated here, but that's not going to solve the problem for that. So, more than likely, that's what's going to happen. We're going to bring the roofing up. And then I'll terminate the roofing right here somewhere probably at that line I'll terminate the roofing there and then that'll I'll be able to uh, put the curb up on there and uh, get that all elevated like it should be so but uh, like I said it just doesn't work so uh, and it's a shame you look at it and you go hey it doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it yeah I'll, these are these are where you have all your trouble or all your protrusions it still didn't solve the problem of the AC now up underneath that air conditioner is just a foam gasket so all this water that's coming down is going up and hitting that foam gasket so it didn't solve that problem um, I know on um, Flex Armor I know that particular guy had a video on there uh, about ACs and within the one minute mark like literally of that and you can go go there I think it's rvarmor.com or something but you can go on there and watch that video about air conditioners and uh, he's leaning on the air conditioner and he says well within that one minute mark he says well if it was a commercial roof it would have flashing and counter flashing on there on a curb and that's exactly what we do and he says well you know even though we do the roofs you still may experience some leaks and what he recommended was to go in and tighten up the bolts that kind of pull it this is a what's called a compression fitting so under inside on the ceiling is a plate for it's a square plate that has holes in the four corners and when you tighten it up it pulls down so basically it's squeezing together like this and that's what is known as a compression fitting so <clears throat> that's what he's recommended is go in there but that gasket that's under there you really want to torque them down you don't just go in there and just start tightening things down so but by the time we put it up on a curb and we get it all you know snug down you don't have any issues with it because it, it, the water would have to try to get around and inside there and even when I do put it up on a curb it's going to have counter flashing up underneath this white lid there'll be another piece of counter flash that'll wrap around so it's going to force all that water away and it's also going to force it below the counter flash that I make for the curb so 
Uh, and basically what a counter flash is, it's just a piece of roofing that deflects water to another direction for the sake of simple explanation. And then the actual flashing is what is known as a flange that goes around the curb that I heat weld back to there. That's what that is. So, but it still didn't solve this problem. It didn't solve this spray. Didn't solve the problems with the antenna. It didn't solve the wire. That antenna over there <coughs> didn't solve any problems, really. Because, uh, I mean, you got all these protrusions. You need to make sure they're not going to leak. Again, that's where your concerns are. So, we, uh, I know I see some stuff here. We'll, we'll seal all that up, you know, afterwards. You can see some right here, too. There's just a, a rear cap, but water's still going to get in there and travel somewhere. We got a split right here, so we'll take care of that too. We'll figure something. Maybe we'll put some epoxy in it or something. But I'll put a backer in there once we get this. I may try to loosen it up and see if I can slide something under there to give it a little backer. I also have another little doodad. It's uh, what they call a hot stapler, and you can go in here and you can almost stitch it back together, and that's pretty pretty cool. Um, and then we can just hit it with some epoxy, kind of just make it look a little better than what it is. And then uh, I don't know, maybe hit it with a decal or something. I don't know. Just I'll figure something out and make, try to make it look clean. But um, like I said, and also it doesn't have any gutters on this on this coach. We need to get gutters on there. And there's uh, let's see on the other side. No got there's either. That's kind of odd. Why would they not have any gutters on there? Uh, and you pay good money for them. But all that water is just going to drool down and ruin your decals and everything else. So and then uh, you also want to check your your awnings right here. Sometimes you'll see little tears right inside there little rips so you want to look for that on there this uh, is gonna to have to come off anyways because we, like you said we got to get up underneath here and see what's going on and then get a gutter on there so if I don't have to take it off I won't the gutter may just be enough to sit on there so I'll measure all that out and we'll get it adjusted proper for sure and then like I said we'll go around these lights as well I want to make sure when you know the customer leaves I want to make sure they don't have these little leaks and come back and go, hey, I got a leak. And you go, where's it coming from? Oh, it's coming from a light. Or it's coming from the top of the window or, you know, around the window. That's where I noticed it. And that's all that could be. And if we're right here, I mean, it's nothing for us to just hit that with a lick of caulking to try to get that squared away. So that's what we try to do as much as we can. Got a screw missing here. And then uh, you got, um, I don't know what this one came out of, but I know they didn't come out of this. But, um, you know, you can see that gap in there too. So, I mean, this thing is just riddled with little tiny leaks that are really need to be addressed. So, all right, well, let us get to work on tear this thing apart, and then uh, we'll see what we got up underneath it here. Okay, so here's something weird. Uh, this is was an aluminum roof. That's aluminum, and it's ply foam, meaning like inside this hole underneath here is all foam. And it's got foam. You won't be able to see it. Won't try, but you you can't see it up inside there. But we already checked. It's foam. So. There's no need to tear all this off because there's no, the deck and everything is sound. We tried tearing it up, we're going to compromise the ceiling, so we don't want to do that. All that works in one composition, meaning the ceiling, the foam, and then the roof deck is all glued, laminated together. So you start trying to tear up this piece, we're probably going to compromise the ceiling, so we're not going to mess with all that. It's just unusual that they had this sprayed because aluminum is a far better reflector of UV light than this will ever be. So someone said, hey, I got these leaks. The, the aluminum, there's one big sheet. Where's it going to leak? It ain't going to leak anywhere, except for in your, around there. So I guess they thought, hey, you know what we'll do is we'll spray it, and then that'll solve the problem. Well, you can see it didn't solve the problem. That's why it's in here. So like I said, if this, if this stuff worked out well, I'd just buy the machine. I could be knocking these things out, you know, one a day, you know, but it's not. They're, they're not worth it. They're not worth it. So uh, we also got some ceiling damage over there on that skylight so we're gonna to have to address that I, I'm thinking unless the owner is but we're gonna look into that but I want to show you that because this if you have an aluminum roof it's much better than unless this water got underneath there and delaminated everything that's a different story but in this everything's sound everything is sound on here so there's no sense in ripping it all up why would you go and put a, a coating basically is what this is why would you go and spray this coating on here on a perfectly good aluminum roof when all you have is these issues here Alright, onward and upward. So this old spray technique didn't work too well. So we're going to replace the frame. The ceiling is rotted, but this is all tight and it's aluminum. So we're not going to start ripping this up. That would be a big mess. The best thing we can do is go inside and fix the ceiling on this application. Um, 
some of them I have to pull from the top so it depends on what it is if it ran all the way across and if the owner wanted to do it maybe but uh, on here we can just cut that out but we uh, also sprayed all that with mold kill but these spray on roofs they don't solve the problem that's the whole purpose of a flashing and a counter flashing on a on a roof system that's how it functions so we're gonna fix this but the rest of this is all fine so we're gonna literally go over this roof and we're gonna go over the aluminum so that's what we're getting prepped for but we had to prep it so once we prep both pieces now we can get it all glued on here and she's gonna rock and roll so we did some work over there and we had to move a wire so what we did is epoxied it and just put a couple blocks down there to hold it down and uh, that's about it but I want to get that up on a curb like I was saying earlier so she's about ready to go with some roofing we got the uh, back portion of this one already uh, glued down so on the way this roof is we can't do it normally the way we do it we usually roll it side to side but we got to go up and over and around so we've already got the back side down here you can see it's all sprayed we got to wait for it to tack up when it does we'll be able to roll it around and then we may even have to make some custom trim or whatever on the side uh, I got to look at the way this roof rolls and uh, then we uh, get it all done. So this is the vent we're going to clean down. And this is your spray-on. That's the spray-on, see? It doesn't stick. And I like to show people this stuff because they go, I'm going to, I think I'm going to get a spray-on. The whole thing's loose. It's all loose. It is not going to stick. It won't stick to that plastic. So, I mean, it'll pop right off. And that's where the leaks are coming from. Everything was just soaking right in there. Because you know way up inside there, we'll have to open the vent, but the water's going to get in and kind of get around that way. Look at there. This guy, look at the size of his arms. See how small they are? If he can rip this apart, <laughs> then, you know, this didn't have a fighting chance. Look at there. Employment by intimidation, it's like, boss. like paper mache. Paper. That's how they say it in Boston. Paper mache is really a... Almost no R there. They take all the R's and they ship them down to Georgia where they say pizza. Is there an easier way to turn that? Yeah, yeah. That but I wanted to show this come off. See how slick that is in the back? I can't get that. That's smooth. Back. That's smooth. So I'll, uh, we're going to take this apart here, but I want to show everybody because they, they think that spray on stuff is good. If it was any good, when I did commercial work, I had all these spray equipment and I had high dollar, um, you know, machines and yeah, if it was worth it, like I said before, I, I would have bought one and I would have sprayed it, you know. I mean, I'd get into it, but uh, they just don't work. Our Vista Cruiser is done. It is leaving us complete. One of the things we did, we had some trouble with the uh, inside in the bathroom. That was not looking well. Hopefully this light will show you. We just clean this thing, too. I don't get no, there you go. We'll make sure I don't get any booger in here. What we did is a all new ceiling and uh, really what that is is a piece of phylon it's siding <laughs> so we put that in there we fixed the frame around the skylight we got all that the frame around the uh, around the vent we did all that as well so other than that it's ready to go it looks nice and clean so uh, we got that done I'm gonna go upstairs and uh, I'll show you the set. Roof. right on the set all right we are done so we got our logo on here all we are right. We just put that on. It's really a stamp. I don't know if you're not advertising. I hardly see it. Unless you're in a plane, I guess. Or some higher elevation than this camper. But uh, we have February 2022 20, right there. So we put that on there so we can keep track of the roof when it comes back for inspections. Or if the customer goes to sell the coach, we don't want someone to say, hey, you know, by the way, uh, yeah, you know, I need to talk you down because uh, you know all these roofs are bad and so forth So you saw this was a spray roof So let, I'll start over here and show you what we got Well, one of the things we already did is we I just put a decal on here because that was cracked and We just want to fix it. So we epoxied that and that was the best color I could find it, It's not a perfect match by no means But um, it at least kind of conceals all that and keeps it watertight. So um, and I want to thank the customer for bringing the coach here. We appreciate you know the, the work we really do and uh, Appreciate him trading with us. So we got a new skylight lens and this is an exhaust fan It's a solar exhaust fan. So a lot of the damage that happened right around here was Probably two part one being that the condensation gets built up on the outside on the outside 
and on the inside there's still condensation it has nowhere to go so when the sun comes up and evaporates it off yeah and I like bust my finger my thumb when the uh, <laughs> when the sun comes up and evaporates that off all the moisture underneath there that frost and so forth when it condensates it will drool down and then the roof deck wicks it up framing and so forth so this is the intake right here so really what there is is a trough in there and when the solar fan kicks on then it'll draw all the air up around the inner lens and it'll just keep air moving through there so that moving that air moving through there should rid the um, the condensation issue you can park these outside these are a commercial roof the whole thing is a commercial roof so there's no reason to, you can if you want to obviously park it inside your option but it's not going to solve some people want to put them under a carport and I'd rather see them out in the sun so again because even if it's under a carport you're still going to have the condensation issue however you're not going to have the sun coming up on it but still when the, if the temperature warms up then that may start to evaporate off some of the moisture but you get my point you can leave them outside um, so you can see also if you look in here some people are subs here uh, they try to give us some comments well we don't we do not put any screws on those anymore don't put any screws on them if you replace your own but you have to use a really good adhesive so um, you know make sure you do that so I'm not saying don't put the screws in we just don't we don't because these things here they need to be drilled out and this is going to expand and contract and when it expands and contracts either pulling or pushing on a screw and I've just had my fill with cracked lenses so we just had the heck with it um, then uh, obviously we got our curbs down here you can see we got the uh, stands in the back of the air conditioner there there's a plumbing vent obviously a new base and cover and then we have our wine guard on here this uh, wine guard automatic we put the boots in there and there's some studs right there so if this fails that's going to be a 3 8 stud so it's a 9 16 wrench point over here 9 16 wrench and then you can just take it off undo the coax on the other side undo the coax on the other side and then go back to the go to the store and get another one so we also put a piece of counter flash that's where the black is that counter flash what it does is it keeps the weather up underneath I'll back up a little bit up underneath here is a foam gasket on the air conditioner and what I don't want to have happen is when the rain comes down and you're driving especially that wind wants to kind of push all of that moisture and everything into the foam gasket I don't want it doing that but that's what this piece does it'll get it below we have a built-in counter flash on our curbs all of them have them and that counter flash right there will get it below this so it'll come off the roof that's the design of that so you can see how we brought this up and then we made new curve for the emergency hatch and then this was our problem here because this was all sprayed so we just formed this up fabricated it all and we did the same on the other side so everything's good to go um, and that's this is so let's see what else we got uh, insert trim this is a special insert trim that we use you may be able to find some uh, on Amazon we don't sell anything here and these are not DIY videos you know I couldn't possibly answer all the questions that come my way and uh, not that I'm too good to answer them I just simply don't have time to answer them um, I'm here quite a bit so um, but I just want to emphasize that it's not a DIY channel and also we don't sell anything at all we don't sell any anything so um, but what we put in here so a lot of the information that I relay on the videos is really for the customers so they can see all the work we did for it that's really what it is so but this is the gutter that we put on we put new gutters on and this is the new insert trim and if you look you can see this insert trim especially on the side it's got a groove and it fits inside the groove there so essentially what it's doing is, is it's going over the track right there and it's going under it and it's going under it it's going over and it's going under it and that locks everything out that's why I like this. It's got that, that slot right there where it can all feed into. So the uh, roofing system is a 60 mil commercial grade TPO. That's what it is. It's structured. This is what you call a structured membrane. This is the same product you're going to find on um, a hospital. You're going to find out find it on a, uh, a library restaurant. The same exact product. Same exact installation actually. So what I did is I scaled everything down so uh, there's nobody who does the type of work we do uh, I've had some people say hey I've copied your curves uh, I've never trained anybody to do them so I'd uh, be a little cautious of somebody who says that they do them just like us uh, I've never trained anybody to do them 
So, but this is the material right here. It's a 60 mil. And there's our phone number right there, 423-475-7663. And there's our website right there. If you need a sample, want a sample, you can either call us one or you can reach us at uh, contact us at rvroofinstall.com. Contact us at rvroofinstall.com. Say, hey, can you send me a sample if you really want one? But um, this is a 60 mil commercial grade TPO. And you can see in there, hopefully, I'm trying to look through the, the viewfinder here, but there's a little squares in there and it has a mesh built into it. What that does is it helps against tree branches and hail and you know things like that. Now if you ever did have something hit the roof this is easily patchable. We just put a hot patch right over it if the customer comes our way. Now we do have a care package that we put together. It'll be probably after this clip. Uh, instead of keep going over it I just made one and I just put it at the end of them all. And then um, the only other thing that the uh, we in one of the care packages is a checker tool it's not quite this one that I have but we just check all the joints like all the welds like that that's it. it's as easy as it is and we also leave them with some product in case you know one of those little lip edges if it did happen to pop then uh, you know he can seal it we leave them all with that but that's how you check all these it's real simple and uh, again we leave them with a tool and everything for it so well, we appreciate y'all watching. We appreciate our subscribers. Um, you know, this obviously isn't one of those fancy dancy type videos. I, I'm, I'm not really into all those intros. Even when I watch YouTube and I see people on there, they want to be YouTube stars. Um, I, I'm just trying to get information out. I, I have way too much work on stuff that shouldn't have failed because these manufacturers, you know, just don't do what they're supposed to be doing. That's probably why I don't have any sponsors either. <laughs> <laughs> especially Dicor. I don't think they're going to be our sponsor but you know that that being said people go out and buy these and they don't look at the roof and they don't try to barter the camper down that they purchase and they bring it in they go oh the guy said he put a coating on it. the guy said he did this or that and it's failed and now they're left holding the basically the bag for the work that needs to be done on here and like I said if you saw this when we first did it, this was a spray-on roof. It, it, it failed. It, again, if it worked, I would have bought the machine. I think I already went over all that. Well, I appreciate you all watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next. Let's see. we got a uh, all the coaches that come out with a care package. This is our care package right here. So I can zoom this in. we got a license plate right here if you want to put that on. We've got, this is a piece of patch. It's an emergency patch in case he got a tree branch to come down and if he had to uh, patch it. Now this is a hot patch. This is the one that we would use much like much like this one around here. It's just the same material but so that would have to be welded in. However, in an emergency, if you had a hole, and we'll say whatever right here, if you saw it in there you take this and shove it in that hole and you go squirt 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 all around in a circle like that and load it. Then you squeeze it, it'll bubble up. That's done. This is a moist secured product. That's what we use. We use all, all Chemlink products. This is Duralink. That's what we use. So that'll seal it. But then, we also left a couple of patches. So the way you want to do your patching, there's an oral away. The way you want to do your patching, and we left a couple in here, is you would put, center it over your, your hole. Once you get it centered, take a pen and outline this. You want to outline it with a pen. Now you got that, just set that aside. And we left, there's a little bit of primer right here. You're going to need that primer. And I might as well empty everything out of this thing. Here's a brush. So now you want to go beyond, beyond the ink line. You want to go beyond that, maybe three eighths of an inch or so. So you're going to be doing this on, on, on your ink line. Then you want to do the whole thing here. So you got all that, all the inside the ink line, and then about three eighths over the ink line. You're gonna take your patch. You're gonna peel the back. This will peel. This film will peel right off. And you line it up. And I usually reach up underneath, and then I take my other hand and I kind of pull it this way. It keeps it nice and smooth. Now you've got your ink line there. You got your primer out here. You take your brush again and go over this, just like that. Okay, go over here because it won't bond to this. That's the purpose of the primer. Nothing's going to bond to the TPO unless it's primed. So once you get that, then you come back with your product and you can put some caulking around there. And that's going to be a pretty darn good band-aid. Um, now, if, if the customer really feels he needs to have a hot patch put on it, that's why we left this. 
Uh, we don't want someone to just go to a, if he can't come back here, we do him for free. If he can't make it here and he's somewhere else, he's like, yeah, that really needs to be put on there. You cannot interchange these materials. So some people think you can take, uh, this is a Carlisle membrane right here. Now Carlisle does make a couple other products, but it has to be the same Carlisle product. But you couldn't take, for instance, GAF and put it on there. You couldn't take um, Genflex and put it on there. You can't do that. They're two totally different companies and they're two totally different products. I mean, they're still TPO. It's kind of like Ford and Chevy. Yeah, they're both a car, they're both a truck, but they're not compatible. You're not swapping parts on them. So it may seem like it'll weld on there. And I've had people at supply houses tell me, oh yeah, 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 we don't have any of that, but you can use this. You can't. Um, it's There's enough chemical imbalance in each product where they won't, they're not compatible. So that's why we put that in there, just in case. So you got the primer, you got that, you got the brush, you got some caulking. And then uh, the caulking, uh, we like to see these come back in 30 days, okay? We, 30 to 60 days for an initial inspection. After that, it's annual. Now, if the customer says, well, you know, I want to inspect it myself, we want them to go along, put a little friction on here to uh, get it warmed up, and then it, you, this is going to stay tight anyways. But in the event he found something, hey, yeah, it looks a little loose or whatever, you can put a little bit more primer on there, and you can use that to just give it a little load. On, especially around the corners, uh, you can go around the corners and everything like that if you had to. So um, that's why we put all that in there. Let's see, we got a magnet for the maybe on your hood of your stove. Got a couple of pens here. Got a fancy dancy key tag with a beverage opener. We can't say beer, it's a beverage. So this is a checker tool. So this is used to check the joint, the welds. You go along like this, and if it pops in there and you find a little hole, we'll say, say there was a tiny bit, if you did, well, that's what you check for, and you're gonna move a little bit. So if you did, then again, you can take the primer, take a little brush, put it all in there, take the caulking, and you're done, okay? That'll hold it so we can get a look at it and you know make sure everything's all set. But like I said, that's what we like to see. Uh, it come back in about 30, 30 days, I like to see them, but 60, all right, but I still want them inspected because I don't want to have a little tiny problem turn into a big problem and then an upset customer. So um, we got all of that there, and that's, let's see what else we got here. Here is a sample of our product. This is a 60 mil, commercial grade, and if you look real hard enough, you can probably see the little, see if I get the angle of this light in here from the shot, you can see these little squares. That's, there's a mesh built into this which gives it its strength. So that's where you, it'll resist hail damage, it'll resist uh, tree branches. So it's really hard to poke through this. It, really, it truly is. You'd have to have something really hard and sharp to really get it. But if you had a big enough tree branch, that could possibly happen. So we get all that. And then like I said, we got another key tag and everything in here. So that's, that's the gist of it. So all the customers, they get, they get these here. And we got an emblem on the back. There's one of our emblems here that we put on on the back and that's about it so we leave all this with the customer so mr. And mrs. customer you know they at least they have all this stuff handy in case of an emergency so we want to make sure everything stays tight and everything you get all the products you need so on so obviously if you have any issues there's a telephone number 423-475-7663 um, keeping all this in mind these are not intended for DIY I just simply don't have the time to answer all these DIY questions. And the other thing is, I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what you have. I don't know what products are on there. And I have guys ask me all the time, what can I use for this? What can I use for that? And, and I don't want to steer anybody in the wrong direction and find out, okay, well, you got silicone on your windows. What can I use to clear, do my windows? Well, you're going to have to dig all that out. You have to dig it all out. Nothing sticks to silicone. Silicone doesn't stick to silicone. So you really got to clean all that out. And if you don't know if you have silicone, and some people don't know the difference, they can't just go up there and feel it and go, yeah, that's silicone, or, or it's just a urethane, or it's a terpolymer. I mean, there's a bunch of different products out in the market now, but the biggest one is being the silicone. And some products kind of simulate in a, in a touch, so you may think it's uh, silicone, but all that has to be, like I said, it has to be removed. Uh, but again, that's why I, I try not to get into advising and I just don't want anybody to be upset But honestly, I really don't have the time at the risk of sounding like a jerk. I'm not trying to be I'm trying to do a good job, but you can imagine how many emails and you know, we get uh, from You know with questions and also questions on our channel keeping this in mind as well We don't quote on social media if you want a quote on yours You'd have to give us a call 
Again, 423-475-7663. Um, you can do that, and then well, you can send us an email even if you wanted to at contact us at rvroofinstall.com. So uh, that's about it. Everything's done. Uh, I think the customer just showed up, so we're going to uh, get him coupled up here, and he may even want to take a glance at the roof, and otherwise we're good to go. But we appreciate y'all watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Um, what that does, from what I understand uh, from the algorithms, what it does is if somebody's looking for information on RV roofs, then you know this video or other videos will pop up. That's what I'm guessing. So if you want to subscribe, well, we put these up uh, pretty often. You can go through a lot of the other uh, videos we have. Some uh, I'm trying to think of some really good ones that we did that were just a hot mess. Uh, there's a Georgetown we did, I think a couple years ago, that Georgetown, we did the whole ceiling, took the whole ceiling, and roof out and rebuilt that whole entire thing. There's a Montana that's up there. There's a uh, earlier from years ago, maybe five years ago, there is a siesta. And you can, that was roof we did. And the guy who did that roof put two roofs on, but the first one on messed it up, but the second one on messed it up. And uh, you'll see that hot mess they did. They did not know what they're doing. So keep that in mind. There's a lot of guys out here on YouTube that'll say, hey, uh, you can do this, you can do that. Um, there's a couple of so-called experts that are out there and I watched one of their videos or a few of them and I just shake my head because I know things are going to leak and I know some of the stuff they've done they have to have leaked because there's just no way things go together like that so if they're not I don't think they mention that but uh, on their video I haven't seen them mention hey yeah we had a leak we had to fix it but um, you know if we have any issues obviously we want the customer to come back immediately come back immediately and let's stifle any any leaks at all but uh, you know, we that's like almost unheard of. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, some of the biggest problems we've had are with these skylights, with them fracturing, and that's why we do them differently. Uh, I don't, some of these ones, like I said, they're manufacturer's defects on a lot of them. But that being said, especially if you had a cambered roof, if you had a roof that had just a little bit of a camber, that wants to lay down flat, like a, just a flat piece of glass. And if you just make this end tighter and that a little tighter, now it's got that little stress going on it. And it only needs a little bit of stress to crack it. So that's one reason why we don't put any screws on them anymore. So, and if they come back for inspection, we take all the screws out and then what we'll do is just load them. Because the product that we use underneath there, it's not coming up. It won't come up. You, the, if you have to replace that, you're gonna have to rip up that whole entire lens and you're gonna have to, it's not coming up. So. Well, anyhow, like I said, I appreciate y'all watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.